Let's move on to question 17. Okay. Directions, type your answer in the box. What value of x makes the cube root of 2x minus 5 equals 3 true? Okay, so we start out with the cube root of 2x minus 5 equals 3. I want to get rid of this radical, so I'm going to raise everything to the third power. Since this is the third power, the index here, raise both sides to the third power. Now, the cube root of anything cubed gets rid of the radical, so that's just 2x minus 5. Then, 3 cubed is 27. If I add 5 to both sides, I get 2x equals 32. Divide by 2 both sides, x equals 16 which makes sense because if I plug 16 in here, 2 times 16 is 32, 32 minus 5 is 27, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So that is true. Okay, we're on to question 18. What are the apparent roots of the equation graphed on the coordinate grid? Now, roots, solutions, zeros, all mean the same thing. And the roots are basically where they cross the x-axis, and they cross the axis here and here. Here, that looks like approximately one-half, positive one-half. Here, that looks like approximately negative one-and-a-half. And I look at my answer choices. Well, negative one-and-a-half, which is basically negative three-halves and positive one-half, those fit what we have here. So choice C is the appropriate answer here. Okay, well, we're just rolling right through. On to question 19. If no denominator is equal to zero, what is the solution set for the following equation? All right, so here we have a fraction equaling a fraction. 3x minus 4 over x squared equals 3 over 2x. Now, anytime you have a fraction equaling another fraction, one of the easiest ways that you can solve this is by cross multiplying. So if I multiply this, oh, this by this, and this by this, that will help me solve. So 2x times 3x minus 4 equals 3 times x squared. Now distributing here, 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. And then 3 times x squared, of course, is just 3x squared. So we have 6x squared minus 8x equals 3x squared. I'm going to subtract 3x squared on both sides. I get 3x squared minus 8x equals 0. Now, I can factor an x out of both of these terms here, and if I do so, I'm going to have 3x minus 8 equals 0. So that's basically x equals 0 and 3x minus 8 equals 0, two separate equations. Now, it just said here no denominator is equal to 0. So x equals 0, I get rid of that because it says it doesn't equal 0. So now, I deal with 3x minus 8 equals 0. Add 8 to both sides. That's 3x equals 8. Divide by 3 both sides. x equals 8 thirds. Answer A. That is our answer. Okay. Question 20. Let's keep rolling here. We have a good pace. Okay. What is the solution set for the following system of equations? Now, you can graph or solve. Now, the way, the way that you can do this by graphing is you can, since this y equals 4x plus 2 and y equals x squared plus x minus 8, since y equals both of these, place this one in y1, place this one in y2. And let me just pull up my calculator. And pull this back, pull up my calculator here. Let's go in, let's clear out what I had previously. Okay, so the first one says y equals 4x plus 2. Second one says y equals x squared plus x minus 8. Okay. Now, it looks like my answer choice is going to be outside my viewing window, so I'm going to adjust my viewing window again, and I'm just going to make it large. I'm just going to make this negative 30 to 30, and scale of 3, negative 30 to 30, 
and of three. Now when I adjust this way and make the scale this way, it keeps it in that same uh, negative 10 to positive 10 both ways, or x and y, but the numbers are larger. So let's graph. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that's y equals 4x plus 2. And there is y equals x squared plus x minus 8. Now, in order to find out what the solutions are, wherever they intersect, they intersect here and here. So let's look for our first intersection point. Second trace intersect. And let me scroll down here. I'll make this my left bound. It's my right bound and guess. So it says x is 2, y is negative 6. Ooh, that looks like that goes there. Let's look at our second one here. Second trace intersect. Let's go up this way. Left bound, right bound, guess. So it says x equals 5, y equals 22. So, negative 2, 6, 5, 22. By graphing, that was an easy way to get it. But if you weren't familiar with graphing, you can also do it by solving. So, since they both equal y, this is the way you solve. I can set them equal to each other and solve. So, I'm going to set x squared plus x minus 8 equals 4x plus 2. Now, what I'll do is I'll subtract 4x and I'll subtract 2 on both sides because I want one side of my equation to equal 0. When I do that, I get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And this factors two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 10. Well, that would be negative 5 and 2. So I break this down as x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. I set these equal to 0. It says I get an x of 5 and an x of negative 2. So I look at my answer choices, which has an x of 5 and x of negative 2. Answer D. So whether I graph it or solve it, I get the same answer. Either way, does it make a difference? Okay. Uh, get rid of that. Let's move on. Question 21. Okay, so it says, identify all the points where the graph of h of x equals x plus 1 times x squared plus 8x plus 16 intersects the x-axis. So, graphing it. Well, okay, let's, well, gra I put graph or solve. Let's do graphing first. Let me get rid of what I have here previously. All right, so we're going to punch this in. So, we have x plus 1 times x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my viewing window back to normal because I stretched out previously, but I'm going to set it back to normal and graph. Okay, so you see, because I did this previously, you see what I have on my calculator does this here. All right, so now that I've done it on my calculator, let me just look right here. Now, it looks like it intersects the x-axis here and here at negative 1 and negative 4. Negative 4, 0, negative 1, 0, which is why I highlighted these two. Negative 4, 0, negative 1, 0. That's by graphing. Now, what about by solving? If I simply... Set both of these equal to 0, I can find them out. Well, the first one, x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 on both sides, x equals negative 1. That one's fairly easy. Now, x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Factoring this, you know, this should be x plus 4 times x plus 4, or just simply x plus 4 squared. Subtract 4 on both sides, x equals negative 4 here. So, whether by graphing, whether by solving, you get the same answers either way. Make sense? All righty. Question 22. The function f of x equals 1 minus x squared 
minus 4 is decreasing throughout the interval. So I went ahead and graphed it here. I'll go ahead and do it here for you as well. Let me clear this out. So it says 1 minus x squared minus 4. And we graph that baby. And you see, this matches what I did previously here, right? And then it decreases all the way until it gets here because it starts to go up. Now, if you want to know, because it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way to this point. Well, what is that point? Well, wouldn't that be the minimum point here? It sure would. So let's do second trace minimum. And let's look for our minimum point. About right here, left bound, right bound, guess, and 1. So it decreases all the way from negative infinity to 1, or like a, a larger picture here, decreasing all the way from negative infinity until it gets to 1. And the only answer choice that matches that from negative infinity through 1 is answer choice B. Okay? Make sense? All right. Wow, this is really easy. Let's go on to question 23. Given f of x, let me expand this here. Okay. Given f of x equals 4x to the fourth minus 15 and g of x equals 2x plus 11, what is the value of g of x of f of x? So that's a composite of functions. All right. So f of x is 4x to the fourth minus 15, and g of x is 2x plus 11. Okay, so basically they're saying take f of x, place it inside g of x. Since g of x is 2x plus 11, wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in what f of x equals. So instead of 2 of x, it's going to be 2 times 4x to the fourth minus 15. That's in place of the x, plus 11 because I'm plugging the f of x inside the g of x. So if I distribute the 2 here, that's going to be 8x to the 4th minus 30 at the 11 on the end. Negative 30 plus 11 is negative 19. 8x to the 4th minus 19, which is answer choice D. Okay? Let's keep it going here. Question 24. A normally distributed data set has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 0 0.5. Which is closest to the percent of values between negative 1 and positive 1? Now, you should remember from your statistics, your teacher should have told you about the empirical rule. Some teachers refer to it as the 68, 95, 99, 7 rule. Basically, what the empirical rule states is that for a normal distribution, the percentage of the population within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean is 68% of the data. If it's plus or minus between two standard deviations of the mean, that's 95% of the data, and plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean is 99.7% of the data. So now, I have a bell curve here. I'm showing the mean. It says the mean is zero, standard deviations of 0 0.5. So I incremented them 0 0.5. Now, it says which is closest to the percent of values between negative 1 and positive 1? Well, negative 1 is two standard deviations away from the mean. Positive 1 is two standard deviations away from the mean. This is positive. This is negative two standard deviations. This is positive two standard deviations. So positive or negative two standard deviations from the mean is 95% of the data, which is option D. Okay, that's another easy one that we can answer. Okay, question 25. Directions. Click on the grid to plot the correct point. Point A lies on the graph of f of x equals 1 half x plus 2. Locate the image of point A that lies on the graph of f negative 1x, which is basically the inverse. Whenever you see that negative 1, that basically means the inverse. So, our function 1 half x plus 2, that's plotted right here. And we see point A is at negative 2, positive 1. 
Now, with an inverse, we know that points are reversed. So, all you need to do, if you want to find the inverse point, see point A lies at negative 2, 1, switch to X and Y coordinates to find the image of the inverse point. So, if I switch the X and Y, that's just going to be positive 1, negative 2. Positive 1, negative 2. That's going to be the inverse. That's all you need to do for that one. You know, they're not asking you for the inverse function. They're simply asking you for the inverse point. So all you got to do is switch the X and Y coordinates. Okay, that's it. Let's go on to 26. Which equation best represents this graph? The easiest way to answer this, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay, now I already did this on calculator. And the first one matches, but let me just pull up my calculator just to show you. So let me clear this here. And y equals, clear this out. So y equals 3 times 1 fifth raised to the x power. And we graph it. And there it is. Okay, and it matches what I did earlier, right there. And it resembles what they have here. So the first one, we didn't have to do much work at all because our first option matches the graph. Choice A. If you punch in these others, you'll see it does not match here. So in effort to save time, I'm not going to do the other three, but you can do the other three on your own and see that they do not match. Okay, let's go on to question 27. Hmm, what do we have here? If f of x equals x squared plus 3x and g of x equals 2x squared, what is g f of negative 1. Okay, so this is a composition of functions as well. So, f of x is x squared plus 3x, g of x is 2x squared, and they're asking you to find g f of negative 1. First thing you're going to do, find f of negative 1. Once you find that value, plug it into g of x. So, f of negative 1. So, that means wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 1. So, since x squared plus 3x is the function, so that's going to be f of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 3 times negative is negative 3. Positive 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. So f of negative 1 works out to be negative 2. Now I'm going to take that value and plug it into the g of x. So it's going to be g of negative 2, which means 2 times negative 2 squared which is 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, which is answer choice C. Boom. There you go. All right. Question 28. Now it says, the volume of a cone, V, varies jointly with its height, H, and the square of its radius, R. If K is the constant of proportionality, which of the following equations represents the correct relationship between volume, radius, and height? Now, from your class lessons, you should have learned that joint variation is simply just direct variation, y equals kx, with two or more variables. So y equals kx by itself is direct variation, but if you add another variable, it becomes joint variation. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to replace the y and the x and the z with variables from this question. So, the volume of the cone, v. So, v varies jointly to k. Remember, the k stays there. That's our constant. If k is the constant, then it says it varies jointly with the height, h, and the square of the radius. So, radius squared. So, v, the volume, is equal to, well, varies jointly, I should say, with the height of the square, the height and the square of the radius. So V equals K HR squared. Now, which one of these match that? 
Now, answer D, they simply switch the H and the R squared places, but it's the same thing. So option D is our answer, V equals K R squared H. It's the same thing. They just switch places with the H and the R squared. Okay, let's move on.